Greetings, Benjamin J from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, I got a message asking me to show the modifications that I made to install the front and rear trucks on this 490. So I just thought I'd do a quick video and pull this apart real quick and uh, give you a quick rundown on how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty basic. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, it takes a bit of effort because you do have to do some modifications. But right now, let me pull these screws out of here. And we'll pull the motor out. There's the motor and the truck. Now, I used the front mount for a 666 front truck, a non-smoker. And as you see, I've got a sheet metal screw with a wire tie around it. And I did that because you need a lot of slop here. And that wire tie is basically just acting as a nut. And so I might put a nylock and a screw on there. But like I said, you need something with a lot of slop in it. Just like on the 666, it's only held in with a hook. So anyway, just a real uh, quick modification to the front truck. And I shortened it to... Uh, when you find the front truck, there's a mounting uh, hook that mounts into this mount. And you just basically snap the uh, hook off and then shorten the truck by about, uh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, perhaps a bit more than that, and then drill a new hole in it, as you see. Pretty basic. But like I said, it just uh, acts as a pivot, and you want a lot of slop in this thing. So that's pretty much straightforward. It was really easy to uh, install this. Now, as far as the rear truck goes, the rear truck is mounted on a stack of washers with a sheet metal screw. So uh, it mounts exactly like it does on any other Marks motor. And uh, I'm going to put a drop of epoxy on the uh, sheet metal screw just to keep it locked. And uh, you don't have to worry about it. And I just drilled a hole, as you see, directly behind where the motor mounts. About three-eighths of an inch where you drill a hole. It's not super critical, but uh, you can just kind of eyeball it on other uh, Marks engines and see where to put it. Now, I did have to do some modification to the plastic to give that truck room to swing. As you see, this is pretty tight as far as its ability to move. You only have this much space. So here's a unmodified 490. And as you see, what I had to do was break out or cut out this angle on both sides just to take this plastic out, as you see. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let me focus this camera. There you go. So I had to take out the plastic and I just used a nippy cutter and just uh, uh, made a couple of cuts and then just snapped the pieces out. But it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's not difficult to do this at all. And it only takes a few minutes. Literally, it only takes a few minutes to... Uh, modify this just to give that truck some uh, room to swing in there. Anyway, it's pretty simple modification. It only takes a few minutes to do this. You could do it with a hand drill. I used a drill press just to drill that hole. And uh, then it was just a basically fitting the, uh, the front truck. And you'll probably have to experiment with length. Uh, it isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I rounded these edges over, take the corners off and give it some more room to swing. And as you see, I could actually take that a bit more of this metal off, reduce this radius, which prevents the uh, truck from impinging on that front crossbar. So I'll probably grind this off a bit more and round it. But it's working quite well, and that's why I wanted to do this video. It's really straightforward to do this, and uh, it just snaps back in. Just uh, hook the rear mount, hook the front mount, and as you see, there's plenty of room there for this front truck to swing. With that plastic in there, it could only go that far and then stop. There was almost no room at all. So just by removing that little bit of plastic on both sides, gives this more than enough swing to stay on the uh, rail. And of course, the rear wheels are just following the front wheels. So uh, once you get this mounted, you don't have to do anything to it at all, oil it. But other than that, make sure it's friction-free and uh, 
has a bit of slop in it, and it works every single time. So it's really straightforward doing this. This is just an old junk 490. And I just wanted to see if it was possible to put a front and rear truck on it. And it actually came out quite nice. It looks good, it runs really, really well. And uh, as you see, with the front and rear truck, it really changes how this locomotive looks. Uh, it just gives it a completely different look. And uh, it runs uh, actually quite well. And I've been uh, running this now since I built it. So what is that, a day and a half? And once you get this front truck adjusted, uh, I ran it at high speed, I've run it at low speed. Uh, I've pulled extremely heavy loads. I've run it with no load. It works, it stays on the rail and it looks nice. So a 490 with a front and rear truck and it only takes a few minutes to do the modification, like I said. The plastic modification is just basically cutting away this angle to give that uh, truck some room to move in this space. So it, uh, it was easy to do, uh, relatively straightforward anyway. Uh, a bit of trial and error and uh, once it's fitted it stays on there and works well. And then I just fitted a plastic lens into the hole which uh, really gathers light and makes this work a thousand percent better. So a genuine custom 490 with a front and rear truck. It looks nice. It runs really well. Built completely out of parts, an old 6.6 motor, and the rest of it is parts out of the junk box, literally. And I've had a lot of fun with this. And that's the nice thing about doing this, is you get the satisfaction of taking some old beat-to-death piece of junk uh, that was just parts and uh, putting it all together, and you come up with a really, really nice, really simple custom 490 that basically cost me nothing. So I'll put the screws back in this. I'll be running it some more. Uh, I will replace that front screw, like I said, with a uh, probably a screw and a nylock. That way I can just tighten it to whatever tightness I want and leave it. It'll stay there. So probably a 632, and 832 screw, something like that. And uh, that's really about all I'm going to do to it. Uh, it runs well. It looks nice. It's one of a kind. I've never seen a 490 with front and rear truck. And it has a double reduction motor and two traction tires, so it'll pull virtually anything. It'll pull uh, 20 Lionel cars from a dead stop. So anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video on the modifications. Really simple to do. It's really easy to do it. Only takes a few minutes. Like I said, I'll put the uh, screws back in this and uh, probably do a bit of tweaking on it. But uh, it's running really well, really well, so it doesn't need any uh, true modification at all. It works. So I just wanted to do a video on the modifications and how to do it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email, benstrains at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.